Good morning. Welcome to Wisdom of the World. Today's story is from Africa, from the great country of Ethiopia. And the story is called The Voice of the Wind. It is said that in ancient times there was no kingdom where Ethiopia is today. The land was ruled by a great, great serpent, Arwe, whose skin was as tough as iron and who was the length of a river. Arwe consumed all man's crops, his sheep, goats and cattle, and he demanded the daughters from the inhabitants of the land. If they did not meet his demands, Arwe thrashed his tail in anger. The earth shook and boulders fell from the hills. He was greatly feared by all. Then a stranger came to the land and through his cunning ways he was able to destroy the serpent. But that is another story that we are not going to tell right now. The story of today goes like this. Long, long ago a farmer was harvesting his crop of cotton when a large snake slithered towards him. Please hide me. The snake pleaded with the farmer. My enemies are after me and I'll be killed. The farmer stepped back as, as he was afraid and he wanted to escape. But then he said, Snake, although you are well known in this land for your bad deeds, in my view, it is right to have compassion for one who is hunted. The serpent uncoiled itself under the gaze of the frightened farmer. Then the farmer said, Snake, I'll hide you in that heap of cotton at the edge of my field. And the snake had just been hidden when the hunters arrived with spears and hunting knives. Seeing the farmer, they confronted him, saying, Have you seen that great forest snake that devours our goats and cattle? We are out to get him. No, said the farmer. The hunters then rushed off to continue their search for their enemy. When the snake slid out of its warm hiding place in a pile of cotton, the farmer said, Now, snake, go back to your home in the forest. I don't want to see you again. But I'd rather stay here, answered the snake. Your life is no longer in danger said the farmer angrily, go at once. But the serpent suddenly wound himself around the farmer. What are you doing? cried the farmer, trying to shake off the snake. I'm hungry, said the snake boldly. I shall have to eat you. Wait, cried the farmer. I saved your life and now you wish to destroy me? I don't understand. But I'm famished said the snake, strengthening his grip on the farmer. You ungrateful creature, shouted the farmer. Go away. But I'm hungry. Well, said the farmer, let our case be judged. We have to find a solution to this problem. The man and the snake sought the counsel of the old gnarled sycamore tree that grew near the winding road that led to the forest. The tree listened attentively, then said, Farmer, I stand beside this dusty road and offer my branches as shade to all the weary travelers that pass this way. They rest peacefully in my shadow, then rise and chop off my branches to make axes and plows. Yes, I know that they do, said the farmer. Although I am generous to man, he is very ungrateful, said the tree. Therefore, I cannot judge this case in your favor. The farmer went pale and grew very worried when the tree added, The snake is entitled to eat you. We must get another opinion, said the anxious farmer. So he and the snake hurried through the grassy banks of the river where the grass grew to knee height. Then the farmer asked the river that flowed swiftly through the forest to give its opinion. 
the sludge colored rivers listen to the story and said listen to me without a river man could not survive he would die if he couldn't quench his thirst with my cool waters and when there is drought man digs holes in my banks to find water for his animals and for himself that's true said the farmer but when it rains heavily and I can no longer contain my water, I flood my banks onto man's field and he is angry with me. He curses me and he throws stones at me. The farmer was silent as he looked down at the muddy brown waters of the fast flowing river. Yes, farmer, the river continued. Man forgets the good that I do for him. I have no use for man. As this is man's nature, I cannot judge in your favor. The farmer was shocked, but even more so when the river said, the snake may eat you. In desperation, the farmer told the story to the grass that rustled in the breeze that blew across the open land. And the grass listened for a long time and then said, farmer, I grow silently in this valley. I give food to man's cattle and goats. Man uses me to thatch the roof of his house as a means of protection. I'm very useful to him. Yes, said the farmer, agreeing with the grass. He even uses me to make baskets for storing his food, continued the grass. And I continue to grow more for him. That's correct, said the farmer trying again to shake <coughs> off the snake. But what happens then? <coughs> Query to grass. When I'm old and a little tough, man burns me. <coughs> he plants grain in place. He plants grain in place of me. And then he weeds me out of the way and destroys me if I grow between his rows of planted seed. The farmer and the snake waited for the grass's opinion. Man is not good, said the grass. On account of this, I cannot judge in your favor, farmer. The snake may eat you. That, uh, that's a cruel, harsh judgment, ranted the farmer. He left the grass and hurried away. And on the road back to the forest, which was the resting place of the great snake, they met the wind. The farmer was without hope, but he told this long story to the attentive ears of the wind who were swirling all around them. The wind considered the situation for a long while and then said, I see that all things live according to their nature. The grass grows to live and man burns it to stay alive. The river flows according to its nature and it cannot help overflowing its banks from time to time. It is only right for man to be angry when his fields are flooded because they are his livelihood. What about the tree? asked the farmer. The tree nurtures its branches both for beauty and shade and for other uses. And no one can blame the tree, grass, or river for their judgment. The cotton farmer was desperate. There was no way out for him. The wind whipped around him and continued. This is not a matter for judgment because all things act according to their nature. So let us dance and sing in appreciation for the way things are, suggested the wind. So the wind gave the farmer and the snake each a drum to play. In order to make music, the snake, the snake had to release its grip on the farmer. Then the wind sang to the snake, as it is your nature to eat man, eat the man. And the wind said to the farmer, as it is your nature not to be eaten, do not allow yourself to be eaten. 
That is the correct, said the farmer, relieved. Realizing that he was free of the snake, the tired farmer ran all the way home to his village and did not stop until he reached his cotton field. So the moral of the story is that all things live according to their nature. Thank you.